Well, I originally filmed this on site, but of course I screwed up the camera. So we'll do it here. Folks, I love this traveling around and discovering the amazing things unseen, but right in front of our noses. It's kind of like the grown up version of running amok in a candy store. Well, kind of, sort of. Anyway, howdy again, folks. Rick from the Boondocking Bears. This time I've journeyed to Buffalo, New York and found myself on Fordham Drive, a pleasant residential street of well-kept middle-class America. Late model cars, well-kept lawns. It's a very nice family neighborhood. And if you didn't know, you'd have never have guessed that this was the epicenter of the grounds that once housed the Great World's Fair of 1901 called the Pan American Exposition. Well, who knew? Anyway, it gets even more amazing because this quiet street is where the 25th President of the United States, Billy McKinley, was assassinated, gunned down in cold blood. So come on, let's check it out. So this is what Fordham Avenue looks like today. It's a quiet residential street with a lovely manicured median. Very nice. But in 1901, this very spot where I'm walking was inside the Temple of Music Pavilion on the grounds of the Pan Am Expo. As you can see from the period pictures, it was a beautiful building, majestically lit, and that was new for the time, mesmerizing the dignitaries and crowds. Now, what few knew, though, is that this building, like all at the fair, were almost unbelievably made from plaster of Paris. But since all the pavilions were designed to be temporary, Plaster of Paris was good enough for the occasion, and in fact, after the expo, they were indeed all torn down. But it was here in the Temple of Music Pavilion on September 6th that the Polish immigrant and avowed anarchist Leon Chugosz, and I'm not at all confident I'm pronouncing that correctly, in the reception line after the president's speech, brushed aside the second term president's offer to shake hands and open fire. You can see the exact spot of the assassination in the red circle. Chugosh fired two shots, the first hitting McKinley's waistcoat, doing no harm, but the second tore into the president, mortally wounding him. McKinley initially survived the shooting, only to succumb to his injuries eight days later. Now justice was swift in those days, just nine days after McKinley's death, with the charges now upgraded to murder, Chugosh was put on trial. And in two days, and offering no remorse or defense, the jury needed but an hour to find him guilty of capital murder, sentencing him to death. 33 days after that, the matter was concluded. Chugosh was fried in the electric chair at the state prison in Auburn, New York. Now, of course, the fair and the Temple of Music are long gone. What remains, though, is this small rock and plaque on the boulevard of Fordham Drive, marking the exact spot of the assassination. Unless you were paying attention and stopped to look, you might drive right by, unaware of its historical significance in the history of the United States. And isn't it amazing, the things that surround us in plain sight? So folks, I'm off to my next discovery, and until then, enjoy, smile, be charitable, and as always, thanks for watching.